Let's talk with DJ Cappuccino. You you will have classes being run of the Communist Party, and they were talking about Marxist. But and you were thirteen was, by then. I was thirteen by then, and so at our home we were used to 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 people that will come and go. Every week they were raiding our house. Mm. If this week is not the vendor government, the 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 army. It will be the South African secret police, the white people themselves. They came with a helicopter. That is the cycling f- around. That is the first day we saw how serious apartheid is. At my place, every time if we hear a knock, by then we know every window has got soldiers. Nine, my bookcase had uh, Mandela's uh, poster. See him yeah, there. so with with the line in. with the line when <laughs> I end we had series of meetings until they came one day and says mayor we are believing in your leadership you are doing what we agree upon we are going to start to pay the rates and I'm told by then I was part of those that were vocal oh, about <laughs> they processed you man in your language <laughs> just talk with DJ Cappuccino. Need to refresh and unwind? Come to Wild Things at Meropa Casino and Conference Center where you get to enjoy quad bikes, swimming pools, water park, restaurants, kids games, reptile park, camping, birds park, and many other activities. Welcome to another episode of Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino. Meet Mabungu Liruli Ramakanye, a distinguished member of the African National Congress and a formidable force in South African politics. With a dynamic career spanning various leadership roles, she has left an indelible mark on the political landscape. From her tenure as the former mayor of Makado Local Municipality and Vembe District Municipality, where she championed community development, accelerated service delivery, to her esteemed position as the Speaker of the Limpopo Provincial Legislature. Fostering dialogue and governance, Mabungu has exemplified unwavering commitment to public service and governance. Transitioning to critical portfolios such as MEC of Transport and Community Safety, she demonstrated her dedication to citizen well-being and moving citizens, currently serving as the MEC of the Department of Education. Mabungu brings her passion for education and her experience as a mother to the forefront, advocating tirelessly for quality education and equitable opportunities for all South African children. Her journey embodies resilience, leadership, and a profound dedication to shaping a higher, brighter future for a nation. She's one of the MECs that her children, grandchildren, go to public schools. Welcome to Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino. Uh, thank you so much for having me today. Yeah. yeah. How are you juggling around with all this schedule? I don't know how um, you people make it. I don't even know how you make it. <laughs> No, no, no. Your mm. day should be straight. You wake up, you have your your breakfast. Now is the mm. season for avocados. You don't miss that in your breakfast. Yes. You just have your avocado on the side. Then you decide on how do you start your day. Do you start your day on high heels or do you start your day on deckies? Yeah. Yeah. So then uh, you know that team from my office, uh, team education will be waiting to say today, we, we are starting at a school. You need to see your children. Then we start our day on high heels. Wow. But um, our, our journey is a, a bit structured. Monday, day for takeys. Tuesday, you balance it. Takeys in the afternoon. Mm. Wednesday, takeys in the afternoon. So we are balancing it. I'm just loving this moment. Yeah, because yeah. I'm saying that because remember, you're also an activist. And we can't remove the activist in you. And we are now going to the elections. I can imagine there's ANC work, there's constituency work, there's meetings, there's emergencies and all these things. The, the, the good part of it is that we are an ANC government. Yes. So it does flow. Yeah. Um, what I do in the schools is still remains an ANC work because when I walk into a school, an ANC policy mm. should be implemented and it should be visible wow. because we are the government. So... It has been a good time, especially now this year after the the, the president really uh, launched the manifesto. Mm. It was one for us to check, did we really do well oh, with the yeah. people of Limpopo? Yeah. Did we really do well with our learners? Mm. 
uh, did we really do well with my happy feet at the ECDs? I see. And and so it it flows better. That's why for me I say it flows because if we we have done well, then that's why now we are satisfied. So so the work is not that hectic. It looks hectic for you that is looking at us. Join us, you'll see how easy it is. I, I, I think you're just downplaying it. You know, I think many people know you in your later years or senior years, but I would love to you know, uh, give the audience an opportunity for them to understand the Baba guy, you know, where I will just give them a glimpse of that little girl, uh, I don't know, in a township, in a village, or where, how was the setting and what are your fondest memories? I'm, I'm born in a township mm. of Chikota next to, to Luitrachat, which is now Makado. I was part of that history to name it Makado. Mm. Uh, we were part of the forced removals. How um, old is that time to township? Uh, I, when I was born, it was there. I think maybe it might have started um, around the 60s. But it when hasn't when it was the forced removals of people from the farms, remember oh. the whole of Salt Pansberg. Um, where on your left you'll have Putamas in Tumure, on your right you have got just farms. That mm. is where the people used to reside. Um, yeah. I was not born by then, but I'm told uh, that when we were born in Chikota, people were moved from the farms, mm. which thanks to the land claims, uh, others are really uh, doing the land claims and there are packages for people to be given. So from there, in the 80s, we had the uh, forced removals. We we were then taken to Playfontaine, Vatterfall. You know the story mm. that all the Zonga speaking will have to go to Vatterfall. All the vendor speaking will have to go to Playfontein. Mm. All the Sutu speaking will go to Endermark or to... Bidon. And we were one. Eh? We were one. My neighbors were Zongas and um, uh, Sutus. And um, in our schools, you'll choose... Um, uh, where to go? Do you want to go to Chikota School? Do you want to go to Tlalelani or to Masidi? So you'll have all of us being able to speak these languages very easy because that is how we grew up. And I think um, uh, fast forward, we went to Flefontaine. We, we, we went to a very cold area. You know, Flefontaine is a very, very damp, uh, wet place really? compared to the vegetation where we grew up in Chukota, where it's uh, warm. I know now it has turned into something else, but um, um, they cut all the trees, the blue gum trees that they used to plant there and build a township for us. So that mm -hmm. is where we were. But you know, one of the things um, that is interesting for me, when we, we moved from Chukota, it was all about that... Uh, these are vendor-speaking people. They should go to the vendor government because by then they wanted to separate us from the South African government to the vendor government. Yes. So we went to Fleurfontein, and I don't know if this was a good coincidence or the movement was good because that's where all of us were born now as activists. Wow. We had to arrive there um, at the age of 13, I was uh, following behind my brother and other other comrades, um, uh, you know, um, and we we were made aware to say the reason why you were brought here is that you need to go to Venda, and we started to reject there and there. They wanted to change our home affairs from no longer being Lutrichat to Chitare which you are cutting Luitrichat, which is 15 kilometers to something that is like 40 kilometers uh, because in the name of being taken to Venda government. They wanted to change. But remember by then, if we were uh, in the South African government and you were going to Venda, you were, they were going to stop you and ask you for a passport. Mm. So there we were born free, uh, you know, even though we had to have permit and uh, all these things, but... You wake up, you are told you are going to get a passport because within these two uh, boundaries, when you go to town, uh -huh. when you come back, they will ask you for a passport. And I think... The township, is, the town you grew up in. Can you imagine? Township people, mm. now you are told... There was even an incident where we, <laughs> we were told that uh, where we are, it had uh, owners before who are chiefs. And we could not just imagine to wake up and go to the chief's crawl for a meeting. 
we we were born in townships with halls with churches where a mass meeting goes it's either to a school hall or to a community a school we we were born in a township you know chikota had every every nation we even had indians living there mm. uh, we were closest you know chikota you walk is what three kilometers into to the center of town yeah. so you walk so we were born in a place where you you climb a bus when you are carrying plastics or you are you have got heavy things otherwise you enjoy your walk to town so now you come to this place you are told you are going to have to have a passport it's it was something else um so so that is where we were born you know mm. um and and remember Fleefontaine is linked to Ilim is linked to a place called um, Shelley where we had um, an organization an NGO called Itsidu by then uh, which um, Itsidu's uh, uh, main responsibility was for human rights. It was the link of the people in what we used to call the far north to the human rights. Um, it was the link for any society that was suffering. One of the things that I was exposed to when I went to Itsidu, I was 13 by then, mm. was that they were doing community work we will go out to, and there you'll have every nation. You had Indians, white people, Shangans, Sutus, Vendas. In one place. In one place. We even have uh, had those that were Zulu by then working there. And, and that place, if you arrive there, <laughs> I don't know how they were doing it, but each day uh, over Saturday and Sunday, there were classes of the Communist Party. Oh, that's yes. where the, yeah. the consciousness started. Yes, there were classes where there will be uh, people like Peter Dunkley, may his soul rest in peace, and other comrades that are still alive. It might not be proper for me to say their names um, mm. in case they get uh, to say I did not want them before. But you you will have classes being run of the Communist Party, and they were talking about Marxists. But and you are 13 by then. I was 13 by then. Mm. And it was all about uh, saying that um, why should we stand up and defend the working class and the community? Remember, in the communist language, when you talk about the working class, you are talking about the poor, the people that are not working, the people that are working, mm. and the workforce in general. Mm. So we'll discuss about those issues. There was a whole issue about awareness of why education of a black child is not good for a black child. Mm, mm. You you you'll do physical science in a school where there's no laboratory and all those things. So you imagine the chemicals. Yes, yeah. y yes. You, our education was about imagining. So yeah. so this is this is where we were all born and uh, in that place you'll meet different people, adults old people. And by then, remember, <clears throat> this was in the 80s. Um, um, this was in the 87, 88. It was not even before 1990. Mm -hmm. So everyone that comes there, it's either one, they are coming from jail, or two, they are running away, <laughs> or the three, they, they are seeking asylum in terms of papers, for their papers to be arranged for them to cross over. Mm -hmm. So, so that is where I was born, uh, following on the footsteps of those that were leading before me. But the other interesting part, beside the Communist Party and these, these classes that were being run, um, you like have the, the likes of um, a, the late Comrade Samson Popi, who also used to run those classes. Mm. May his soul rest in peace. But also, that is when the debate of the Youth League started, remember? Yes. Uh, now it was that time when we were saying the structures should start to be debated, uh, who's going to form, do what. Um, they, there were preparations to say, um, after 1986, you remember, now we, uh, there was this exposure of structures having to be told more people that did not go out of the country. Um, but let me also indicate, when I was growing up at Fleurfontaine, when my, my parents were still alive, um, at my home, um, I, I follow in the footsteps of my brother that is an activist um, himself, but 
also at my home, my mother um, was a hawker that did many things. She, she sold um, many things. Mm. I was saying to the other team the other time that in today's, you are calling it a tender. Yeah. A, a tender of supply of protective clothing. Yeah. My mother used to do that. She used to supply construction sites with the protective clothing. She used to make them. She does. She was not making them, but they will go by mm. and and come. And um, she had a driver's license. Um, uh, so and when it was not fashionable, uh, so we we were interested as small children that uh, by that you'll wait for seven years to go to school. So you'll be interested to be in the car and go see. Uh, she will come back with all these merchandise. And we'll be picking, and and um, she'll have a list of people to say this one, the sizes, and everyone. So we'll have to cut papers, write your name there, DJ, and your size, and attach it to your own packet to assist mommy. Yes, yeah. when she gets to the site, when she hands them over, everything is packed like it's from a dry clean. Oh, wow! And and I was exposed. She was an entrepreneur if it was today's uh, uh, language. So I look at ourselves today, we are giving out protective clothing tenders, and we're like, wow. So this world has existed. It's just that it was not monopolized, but mm -hmm. it will be a construction site of a school, construction site of houses. When they needed protective clothing, she'll do that. So in that, she will be exposed in meeting a lot of people. So at our home, we were used to, 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 to people that will come and go. We'll oh, be, we were terms. used, yes, we were used to seeing you coming very, hey, give him food this year, hey, tomorrow morning he's going to take that order. But when we wake up, you're gone. But did, did you understand what was going on We that didn't, time? we didn't. Um, and, and because we were used to this traffic of people, we, we never cared to say who was that, where do, but anyway, we were young. Oh. So, so there will be couples that will come. By then, there is this one couple that really, um, the, the men came first. They were speaking Portuguese. We only know now that that was Portuguese. Um, the, the people from Mozambique will cross and do all those things. So you'll have these people speaking these languages who just say, ah, ah, now we are kids in the home. Mm. So, so we, we grew up in that type of a family. Mm. And, and because of, of my brother's role in, in whatever that he was doing, we continued, even when my parents has passed on, to have our doors opened. Um, when the Busta, I'm a Lutheran, I grew up in Lutheran, I was born in Lutheran church. Um, so when we grew up, what will happen will be that whoever that you meet in church, in the afternoon they can be eating at your home. So it means that ish, you are looking at the age of that person. Ish. If that person is older, it means today the mat is yours. There is no mattress because the older oh, one will have to sleep yes, on the bed. Yes. You know, and you look at all of those people, how many are they? Ish? It means out of the bedroom, back to the dining room now. The chairs goes on top of the table. We get under the table to sleep you, there. You know, if there's one thing I admire about uh, ANC intelligentsia, I mean, that time we never had phones. Mm. We never had um, other means of communication. But there was a, a well-coordinated way. Somebody would leave Transke. Can you imagine? Go to Jobek, go to Chikota. Mm. And still you arrange everything and it's a smooth process. Can you imagine if you had the resources that we have now, how easy it would be? It was not going to be easy. A lot of people would have been killed. You'd be intercepted. Right? Yes, because yeah. now I can take a, your picture and want to, to tell friends, hey, I've got this one at my house. You speak in Portuguese. It, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you will not know if it's safe or whatever. Mm. And I think that just that intelligence. So I was exposed to being accommodative, being respectful, um, accommodating a different view. I'm a very patient person, but very decisive because I know what needs to be done, but at the same time, I have to have a listening ear 
to a different view. So, so it's about that, and that is me, and that is how we were born. Um, but also, you know, 87, 88, 89, it saw our home being opened. Mm. When now um, the, a lot of comrades were being arrested in Sibasa, would be taken to Chitare, we were the first house to be near. Well, was there never a time where the apartheid police came to raid or just to ask something in your house? Like, oh, did they we... tell you of a code that <laughs> when they come, don't say this, don't say that? Like, what happened in that process? No, 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 they never tell you anything. Because remember, if they just give you one clip, you say, but they said I should not say. Oh. <laughs> so we were never briefed. You you are taken through a process, you see it, you, you, you just have to adjust. So, so the our because of Flay Fontaine being where it is, Chitare and Sibasa, the police will come and just and now they will use they'll just come and drop everyone that they've arrested at our house at Flay Fontaine. But the nicest part of it on your question is that uh, okay, any, anyway, every week they were raiding our house. Mm. If this week is not the vendor government, the 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 army it will be the South African secret police, the white people themselves. Mm, mm. Um, so so when what happened was that in 88, 89, there was these posters of Regina Munti uh, that were starting to go out. Yeah. Maybe if you can give a bit of a background of um, who she was. Uh, Regina Munti is the church you remember in Soweto where people used to go to pray. And they will get addressed. So my brother used to go. We used to call it PWV. Uh, by then, uh, they will go uh, to Jobek, to Soweto, get all these posters. Uh, then there's a poster of a church of Regina Mundi that shows people being saved. That shows social cohesion. Mm -hmm. But there's a, there's a poster of this church that resembles apartheid which you'll remember even in other churches where in the morning there will be an Africana service. At 10 o'clock there's a vendor service if a, or a vernacular service. Mm. So my brother came back with posters of all these Africana churches being pulled down by the people shall govern. You remember that poster that yeah. showed a lot of people with the robes saying the people shall govern. So we were actually pulling down churches. <laughs> mm. So this post that was there, we 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 had uh, in we had a, a, a <coughs> posters of those that were in Robben Island. By then we didn't even. And you were not supposed to have that material. He had it. I'm sure it was from underground. He comes back and he says because this home is of everybody, he puts them on the wall. <laughs> so when you are sitting, everybody that comes in. It's like, wow, what is that? So we were taught, we explained. Mm. So it was just me, my, my other sister, my other sisters were married, and my younger brother. So we're everybody that comes. So I'm sure one of the um, bimbis saw it, and they went and reported. Notified the authorities, yes. Because as people are coming in, you don't know. We are loved. We had many people that would just wake up and come and sit at our house. So you never know if this one is an MPB, this one is whatever. Oh, yes. Hey, so this day, the apartheid uh, special branch from Lutherhat came. And somebody came running before the vans uh, uh, arrived. Ari, your brother says, take down the posters. Your dad... <laughs> So we did not understand. So by the time Riri Khail, uh, they were arriving. There is a rope left there. Half of the poster is gone, half left. They saw it. <laughs> and they saw it, but this is what we want. Bring, bring, bring. But we are here for that. Yeah. And then had. my brother had to go underground. Mm. They could not trace him. So after some time, I'm sure they heard that he's back. They they came with a helicopter. That is the cycling around. That is the first day we saw how serious apartheid is. We were even saying that at our house there by that corner we should have a helicopter pad, mm. and really. 
for our struggles and the people's struggles just to say here yeah, that is where a helicopter and I think those white people were up to eight. They came. We have never seen so many white people at the same time. Mm. We froze. They came. One hold us one place. They ransacked the house. Mm. They even pulled down the ceilings of the house. Uh, Just checking everywhere. They checked everywhere. They have picked up that he was at the at the at the PWV meeting preparing. So our house now we are standing in one place. And then because these ones they came in a helicopter. I'm not sure if they were where they've but we knew too that we attached to Lutrichat. Uh, so the vendor government came. You remember those cars that we used to call the hippo? Yes. They came in a hippo uh, to reinforce. So the soldiers, we were used. You know, at my place, every time, if we hear a knock, by then we know every window has got soldiers. And sometimes it happens 3 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock. I'm never telling you, like... Nine o'clock, you're watching TV, they are knocking, they are ransacking. Three o'clock in the morning, they are ransacking. You think they are done, they come back. Hey, so Rene Bile, we never had problems. You know, there was a time that all the clothes from the wardrobe were staying on top of the bed. All the blankets were outside. If because are, they will remove them. They will remove them yeah. either way. So in the morning, you pack, in the evening, they are taking out. So everything will... But that was for a good cause. Because now they were used that all the clothes... Are outside, so anyone who comes can go sleep in the in the clothes. So if they you know, know if there's anything that I feel that uh, maybe the government or even the ANC hasn't done well is to document these stories because yes. these young ones don't understand the price uh, you paid for this democracy, and that's why it's taken for granted. That's why somebody doesn't even register to vote, like it's nothing to them. And I feel that I mean. For me, as you speak, I'm visualizing the house. I can already see it. I can see <laughs> the fence. Can you imagine if that thing is even uh, in a media format that one can consume and understand what happened? The level mm. of consciousness that would happen. Mm. Yeah. No, no, it's true. That's why it's critical. You know, two weeks ago, I went back to the township to do door to door. When I arrived there, um, I, I went to a section where I know is older people. Mm. And one of the things were, hey, you came. Then we are going to vote. Hey, you came. Can you then imagine? We, yes. And, and, and everyone now was like, eh, eh. the T-shirt the that I have is the last one that you gave me. So, mm. so that uh, remembering the days of struggles, them being parents, because, you know, one of the things and strength about townships mm. is that we'll know which family has got food, which family does not have food. So if in your family today you don't have food, my parents don't have to even ask you. They'll just call you to say, hey, come now, they are eating because the other children are eating. Mm. So so parents can go hungry, but children will never go hungry. Mm. So these these are mothers and, and, and uh, fathers that when we were growing up, I was actually saying it to the comrades that was with me that, you know, one of the things some of us are responsible is because they will stop you in the street. Namely, it was worse. Because after my parents passed on, with that social cohesion that they were doing and everybody could come to our place, you know, we hate, we, but this is serious, we hated people to visit us on a Sunday. Because the, the Sunday food. is a seven-color day. And they will reduce the portions there. They will reduce the portions. So... <laughs> You remember we used to slaughter chickens on a I Sunday? Know. Yes. We'll force my mother to say, slaughter two, slaughter two, slaughter two. Because we know if she slaughters one, he will only look at the pieces going. And, and in our era, people don't understand that that was the only day we'd have meat or chicken. Yes. That was the only day of the week. Like the whole week is cabbage. It's something we improvise. Tin fish. Yeah. Yeah. You, 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 Sunday. You, mm. you wash your hands, you know, you dress up for church, you know your seven colors. Visitors come. Visitors <laughs> come. <laughs> and then we are looking, but uh, my, my elder brother, Abram, have you started dishing? 
Yeah. Actually, no, but start with the visitors. Or everyone will be holding him now with this shirt. And we always prioritize visitors. <laughs> we prioritize visitors. <laughs> And the pieces of the chickens, that bone, I still look at it and says, you bones, you can't cut them into half. It's not like these chickens of today. Of uh, yeah. uh, You know, you can't cut it into half. It's a full piece. It should go to an adult. Yeah. So, so but this, this is the life. This is where we start. And in 89, really, uh, the, the discussion about the youth league and uh, all other things started. Transition. And the transition. Yeah. Uh, when they started, remember, the whole country was attending uh, meetings on preparation of the release of Mandela. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in 1989, they started to release Mandela's photos, the old ones, before he went yeah. to jail. I think we could see him for the first time on T-shirts now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my brother went, he got T-shirts. Um, we, we, we also got T-shirts. We didn't know these people are SB. Uh, branch members, they were um, police underground, those SBs. Mm. So there will, there will be people that will come with the t-shirts. But ne, I, I grew up under comrades that were very strict. Um, they will tell us, don't wear anything that you don't know. And uh, at least we had my brother that will give us all the material. So 89, my bookcase had uh, Mandela's uh, poster. See him yeah, there. so with with the line here. with the line <laughs> when I entered and remember in the township him and the other one were only two that will go to these meetings of the preparations, mm. others will come from Toyando, others from Sintumore. so everyone will come around me for the latest. To see, ah, you should have seen me that Monday, when I get to school, everybody was already walking behind me because my they want to see had a poster. Yeah. And then our principal was like, Mabungu, this Why time... Why you go to work? Why you go to work? The poster. Hey, you'll be arrested. Why do you have Mandela's poster? These are already out. Yeah. We have to go to the principal. Don't just say these things now. Mm. And and those were the days now we started to talk courses. We started to talk SRCs. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and uh, I was born. <laughs> that's, that's, then you were inside now. Inside now we were inside. You know, yeah. one of the priceless moments about our politics where we had, um, you know, Kosatu House for the workers, the unions. Kosatu had very strong branches. So in Lutrichat, we had one, which is Makado now. We had one. Um, you are beaten. Your parents are arrested. You don't know where your other siblings are. You quickly rush to that office. Um, I know uh, we had an office of lawyers for human rights. Mm. Um, mm. Comrades like well, Comrade Devet, um, they are veterans now. He was running that office. Um, we, we, Uri, you meet a person, you ask them what is wrong. The minute they start to talk by the time they finish, we have taken them to the Lawyers for Human Rights and COSATU office. So by, by then in uh, the 90s, early 90s, you already took a decision that this is my space. I want to see how far I'll go with this. Or you also told, told yourself, no, uh, it's, a, it's just a phase, then I'll, I'll pursue a career. And, and uh, My space really was on more on community development. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, my initiation was aligning it with the uh, uh, Marxist theories of believing in social movements that allows people to understand why they should change their own environment. Yes. It was not more on pushing and doing things for the people. So, so, so I can't separate the two. Um, one of the things that... I liked um, when I was growing up is that the, the people that nurtured me, even in the early days after 1990, okay, we were even, you know, we were even trained uh, how to dress in the ANC, uh, the black skirt issue, the T-shirt and the beret. I used to do berets. Um, it was an in thing now, there. It was an in thing uh -huh. there. So 
anywhere where you are going, there should be a beret on your head mm. uh, with the sticker, those uh, pins that were there of Mandela and the uh, uh, Ravonia trialist, uh, all of them, you know, or a badge here on your T-shirt. So if it is a day that you don't have any T-shirt that is written, we were encouraged to wear a plain T-shirt, black skirt, dekis, beret, and a badge. You remember those paper badges of Mandela, yes. Walter Sisulu, yeah. with three with the, with the strings going. Sort of <laughs> that was a precious <laughs> moment because you keep it safe, mm. you are going to wear it. So we were told when you go to ANC meetings, there is some dignity of presenting on how you present yourself. And I, I th that was very important in terms mm. of even understanding the decorum and how you conduct yourself when you go to those meetings. Yeah. yeah. And, and when you get there, uh, you'll get these praise singers that have got written these poems. They are talking and you are ululating and you you'll, will be trained to say when you ululate, there will be a time that you'll ululate and go there, but there are times that you are ululating in a group so that the decorum of the song that is being sung. So it's not that we are all over. And, mm. and sometimes now people see us with this structured Discipline in the ANC, they think it's it's it has been built in yes. us as part of the training to say, mm. if you were to present and represent the African National Congress, mm. will they see a Mandela in you? Will they see a Winnie in you? Will they see an Oliver Tambo in you? Will they see a Chris Honey in you? So before I go chapa 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 chapa, I ask myself those questions. And the decorum of the movement is about the name. And so this is one of the things that they were done. There were times, uh, early 90s, even after when we've come back to welcome Mandela, um, you remember the Teflop story? We were here, all of us. In the morning, it was nice. Buzzes. If, if, if you were there, you'll remember even men that were not in the khakis were in black trousers. Uh, in the bars, we were singing, everyone in beret. But after that, it also intensified. Remember, it did not stop until 1994 to be beaten by the police and everything. Yeah. So for us, from Fleifontein to Luitrichat, you'll actually find two or three roadblocks. Mm. So what we'll normally do, you'll wear the the the... The, the Mandela shirts, the, those that I had by then in, from 1990 were white. So we'll wear black and white, and but also Rene, we were using that because that was our color of the church. Mm. So, so when we go to church, you are wearing your black and white, so you are fine. So they can't stop you. But we needed the banners. Remember the, 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 the ones that you'll write by hand and paint? And... Uh, I, I, you know, I, I respect the taxi drivers by then. Mm. There was a movement that every taxi should have a feather dust stick or just a stick. Why? When we make those paper banners, the, 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 the cloth ones, you'll fold them. Mm. Maybe one will put them inside their bras or see where you put them, but mm. hide. Not in the things that the police will search. Maybe others will roll on themselves, then wear a skirt, especially the ones that you will not see. They will roll it on themselves and then wear a skirt on top and sit. But those taxi drivers will have um, a sticks that stays in the car as feather dust and whatever. Mm. When we arrive where we are going after we have passed the roadblock, they will take off the head, which is the feather dust, and we take the sticks Put in the banners. Is the equipment is and red. The police will be saying, "How did they pass the three roadblocks with this thing? With this thing?" When they are now, we were arrested once or twice. Mm. But no, we were with it. The police searched, but there is no way that you have passed. Rather, we were mm. with them, mm. with us. So, in fact, when the roadblock is there, and maybe a kilometer away, we need to start a strike. Mm. We'll pass. Then the police will be looking at us getting out of the Texas, getting... These are different people. We have taken off the things that we're wearing on top. Now we are marchers going for them now because yeah. <laughs> that was the target. So, you know, I, 
you you sit and you just loved everybody. Mm. Those taxi people were not in politics, but will say whatever that you want done. We, we, with all these things, were there a time where you felt like your life is in danger, like where you were scared, where you feel like maybe this could be it, something really bad will happen to me because maybe you were caught or they were looking for you about something? Um, I was I was one of the youngest, and the only day that I can say I did feel worry. Uh, should I? Should I no longer? Was when we were arrested. It was a kumbi. I think um, they've mastered Uri. We put um, sticks for feather dust, and I think that day we overdo it. We had so many <laughs> sticks. You were over ambitious now. Yeah, we were yeah. over ambitious because the match was big. The match was big because we're going to start it from Madumbija and walk to town. Um, using the new road, we yeah, are coming to the second layer Bija now. Uh, <clears throat> so when we uh, we passed the three roadblocks that day, and they were mended by white people that day, we passed. Get to the vendor soldiers. Bye. The soldiers were. Uh, mm. uh, you look suspicious, but I, we are not, but no, man. And his kids? Uh, is, we were kids by then. Mm. You know, uh, we were kids younger than 18. And it's youth of the church, so we're wearing blood. Uh, uh, we have seen the likes of you. Why does this take, especially this one, have got more sticks than any other? Hey, but no, this one, it closes, it goes. So by then, in Luitrichat, eh, there, were, there were this torturing that was happening. All those that were being arrested, mm. eh, including Bo Abram and others, they, they will put you in a second with a cat. It's not a story. They were doing it with the comrades. And then they will put that sack inside the water. The it's cat does not like... the cat there. No, but, but the cat does not like water. Remember, it You are goes. dealing with two things there. You are dealing with an animal that does not even like water. And it blames you for being with it and inside there. Because it can open a sack and go out. Yeah. And by then the sack has been bolted up here. So when we were sitting there, the black policemen were the ones that comes and says, yeah, today we got you. Don Jensal Sagan. Don Jensal Sagan. And I'm going to say, don't know why else can so the rubuza, the rubuza, and uh, because we knew, and uh, myself, I've lived in a family where different tortured people will come back with the first house where they were dropped. Mm. And remember, I needed to record that you have been dropped at what time, and then when you were still conscious of what the police did, we'll record it on the book for them or when they come to pick you up a day or two days later when you feel better than we would have recorded. So it was not a joke. I knew what they could do. The people that were used, they were done electric shocks and everything. Some you could see them when they come back then. Remember, we were nursing them back to good health at my house. So I knew the, how the body would look like and that was the day I said we were sitting row for a line, and then I remember one Pretorius came. He says, "But uh, yeah. no, they, they are candles. They are candles, man." Abalabari. Ampur, look where, look where, Kati. Chimange, ah, Chimange, church is we some little hat. So, so we sat there, and uh, after that, there was a decision taken that, okay, we might be risking too much with the mm -hmm. kids. Um, and anyway, by then, Mandela over, over. Uh, let's see how best we deal with it. And that is when now we did the famous uh, Louis Brechard boycott. Uh, you know, I, I think this activism stories are a lot. <laughs> and then I want to deal with uh, public service matters okay. with you. Okay. Because I think... <laughs> This is actually, it needs an episode I on its own. And I'm enjoying this. I want to story. continue. <laughs> but I want you to excuse me for a minute. I'll okay, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> I want us to get into, because I can see that we need an episode of this activism. And, and I'm so fascinated about them. And in all honesty, that's what is missing. 
we wouldn't be struggling with all this. But what is this mm. if people knew what you went through? And, and I think from today, even my perspective has changed. I can see that you're a true, true, true <laughs> <laughs> revolutionary. You didn't hijack the movements. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But when was your first political deployment in public service? In, um, after the TLC era, <clears throat> there was a time that the whole issue of words being more than the way the words were done in 1996 because they were very, very fast. And we were saying, how do you then get the local people that are known to be representing their own constituencies, which is the whole issue on the debate of the what, um, uh, what, uh, what councillors and the issue of the PR councillors now from the TLCs to what we'll then call municipalities, mm. transitional local government to fully fledged what we now call municipality. So in 1999, we went into our community hall. Um, and then the ward councillor came by then, reported. When we went into the community hall, they then said, <coughs> somebody from the ANC at the region came by then. I don't remember who, but the person explained, uh, the comrade explained that uh, we need to have somebody that you can trust somebody mm. that you can say when there is no water, you go to their house. They explain the whole issue of a ward councillor being accessible. Mm. And then there is another category of uh, <coughs> uh, what we'll then call uh, PR councillors, yes. representatives of the African National Congress in council. Then re we requested the team to leave and let us be as a community. Hey, may, may their souls rest in peace, my comrades. Uh, Mema Liti was a unionist. Um, she was an activist uh, in Kosatu. She had uh, nature does. She has really, um, I worked very close with her son. So we were the ones that in 97, when Sanko started, we formed Sanko. Mm. In fact, we didn't form when the community was coming together, we were put into Sanko. Yeah. I was heading the, the youth desk. So in 1999, when this whole process started, it was an obvious thing. It was you, DJ, can you be a councillor no, in favor of Mavuk? DJ, can you be our what councillor no, in favor of Sketaket? So yeah. that is how we were nominated. It was never this battle of going to people's houses, nominate me tomorrow, nominate me. Ah, that is one, my first it, it, deployment. It, 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 this one, eh? So we went, then the ANC then said, there's going to be a conference to nominate the least conference. Started then in 1999. Mm. So for the 2000 local government election. So we went to Makado Show Ground, Mam Joyce, Mashamba, and uh, may his soul rest in peace, and... Uh, and that George Mashamba, they were like parents to me. They, mm. they natured me. She's from Valdesia, and uh, when she was there, I was the baby, you know? Mm. Um, so they came. We, we went into a conference. And, you know, one thing about that conference, I participated later in my life being a, 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 pers a list member when there were conferences of the ANC for list. Um, at that conference, people were voting. And it was not like now, but it was like, hey, I'm also on the ballot. I'm also on the ballot. And when people voted, I came out in the top eight at that list conference. Mm. So Mama Joyce Mashamba calls me and says, baby, what is this thing that you are in the top eight of the list? Little mama, what? But, mm -mm. but there's something about you that you should start to take yourself serious. Mm, mm. Because if at your age, people have already put so much confidence on behalf of the structures, yes, you should take yourself serious. I was with bigger people by then. There must be something about you. Yes. Mm. So they started to make me aware to be conscious of that. Okay, fine. So then we needed to go constitute 
the council. Mm. So the speaker, the chief whip, and the mayor will be decided by the ANC. But when the mayor comes back, he needs to engage the women's league, the youth league, and uh, the Sanko by then, and just generally to close the whole gap of social cohesion in the exco. Then I was put in the executive. Okay, I was not the youngest councillor. There was somebody that I was older to who was a white councillor, so we used to laugh to say I'm not the youngest. Mm -hmm. But I was the second youngest. Then I was in the exco. In the exco, I was given the responsibility to head special programs that deals with social cohesion, sports arts and culture, and social and uh, special programs that will be your women, your youth, your elderly, and the disabled. So, so that is where now the journey in government started. And I've noticed that you have programs. It's, it's like you have a heart for people with special needs. And it's like the, it's close the, to your in heart. In fact, it's not mm. even no longer about the heart. You know, Makado municipality was the first municipality when uh, Rosina Sminya was MEC of Public Works. We were the first municipality to receive an award of doing good programs for the disabled people. When I was a counselor of the special programs, the current um, a DG, DDG in the, in the premier's office worked with me. He was still very young as well. Mm. Um, and uh, Slaelo as well worked with us. Because remember when we started in 2000, they called all of us and says, Barry, when you are a counselor in special programs, you work with the premier's office. Yes. These are the things that we do. We want you to replicate them in the municipality. They gave us so much support with other municipalities, but when the awards were introduced, Makado was the first. We received an award, when my first term of being a counselor. Very impressive. Um, uh, and uh, I bought, we bought a car for a disabled person, that's when I knew that our government has got a program to assist a disabled person to can get a car that fits their condition. And we did good because we had business people mm. being disabled. So that is where I come from. I come from the African National Congress that delivers. I come from the African National Congress where when you are given a task, you do it diligently. Yeah. You, you don't go manga manga, you implement. And, and uh, we were one of the municipalities that if you were to visit us, to call groups of old people to come and dance Chigombera Ganesh Belan mm. will not take us more than two hours. There were a phone call away. We knew who our groups were. And you'll remember when now, fast forward, when Comrade Joma Songanyi was uh, MEC for Sports, Arts, and Culture, mm -hmm. most of his uh, activities in the Shigubu groups were by our municipality. Because you were in touch, you were on the We were ground. in touch mm -hmm. and we will arrange with them. But what was also important was that those groupings are organized. They just need recognition by their government. They are there. They're there. They are yeah. existing. You just need to tap on the part of the leadership to do, a, 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 you know, I partnered with them that time when the Shugubus were still going to France. You know, they used to do a Shugubu in France. Mm, mm, mm. And they would come to the office of the mayor and the mayor by then it was Comrade uh, Lakula, may so rest in peace, would be like, I'm not dealing with you. Go to your counselor. Now you must We, we should them. sit with them assist them. And they will not even want a lot of things. They were not a burden because mm -hmm. you just need to arrange transport for them to come. They get passports. They come to Pretoria. They do the visas. From there, the organizers takes over. So they just need to the government to be a bridge for them to be able to cross over. And that is how we started in government. And I think uh, I started in government at a high note and I'm excited that we are still at a high note. And fast forward. You are the mayor of Makado local municipality. How was the experience? If you can still recall anything you can say, this is memorable, whether it was a challenge, whether it was uh, uh, or something 
good that you cannot forget about it. Makado is one of the biggest municipalities that we have in the province by then. Remember, it's just that uh, it has not really added, cut more words. When we started, we were 38. By then, now they are 39. Um, the IDPs in that place used to be a place where everybody will just come and shout their personal needs. Because of my spending time there uh, as a councillor behind other people, when I became a mayor, we introduced the clusters, the regions. We, we then said for us to have proper uh, IDPs that will be meaningful, the regions need to sit and say, if we are called Vatarfal region, we prioritize our own things. If we are called Kutama Sintumure region, if we are Makado eh, Zanani region, we prioritize our own issues and agree. Then when you come now, it is no longer everybody speaking, but mm. it will be representative saying, in this cluster, these are the issues and these are the priorities. And I think that started to shape us to, to be able to implement. You know the whole issue, Yauri, you neglect the town, you go to villages. It yeah. was not true. Because if you neglect the town, you will not have revenue. And and we started, you remember, when I was a mayor, one of the things that the people were doing was not to pay the rates. Mm. One of the best moments that I have is when the rate payers came for discussions. And and Cocta by then, we, we sat down and we had a discussion. Uh, Comrade Makoma was still an official by then. Yes. She came, we said, we had a series of meetings until they came one day and says, Mayor, we are believing in your leadership. You are doing what we agree upon. We are going to start to pay the rates. And they went wow. back into paying the rates. Voluntarily. Voluntarily after mm -hmm. engagement. And, and that's the policy of the African National Congress. You don't force you persuade and make people to understand. Because remember, the minute they understand, they will not go out of it. Mm. But you force them, you have to force them every time. Mm. And that is me in local government. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed my time there. And and it, it, it is uh, Makado local uh, where you didn't finish your term, right? Yes, How my first term. Uh, you know, I was still in the youth league when I became a mayor. And um, uh, very was young, very young. I was still deputy chair in the province, and will still come to a PC ANC Youth League meetings, mm. being a mayor. And that is why some of us just love the ANC. Um, and uh, I think after the 2012 conference, um, remember I went in. We went to elections. And we which came one is back. The no, no, the 2012 uh, national elections. Oh, yes. Um, and I think when we came back in the province, there were different views. Um, I'm told by then I was part of those that were vocal oh. about... <laughs> they processed you, man, in your language. <laughs> I'm told. Do yeah. I still remember? No, now it makes sense. No, no, I, I see. Yeah. But that, those were the days of... Uh, of the ex in Limpopo. Um, and I was just <laughs> starting my second term, remember? I didn't yeah. even finish. But but what I like is that the same comrades will still come back today and believe in your leadership because by then that was about that era of disagreeing. Mm. When we came back and the lineup that we were sub sub supporting has won at national, um, you know... Uh, yeah, but okay, charge. now go and uh, they want to show you that who is in charge. It's not your national conference. It's us here. Yeah, go and work at your national leadership. But um, it, it, I, I can say it. Mm. Uh, sometimes I feel that ANC can be very petty, mm. especially after conferences. After conferences, if you can check, it becomes very bad where you are no longer... You are the member of the NC, but now you belong. Kibale. Aba asbarine. And that what has actually hampered this strong movement. I feel that NC 
would have been far right now. Because every conference, you have new enemies. And these enemies are your brothers and sisters. And at the later stage, some go, some, some reunite, some are not. Ah, we could have been far right now. I think it's individuals that mm. can't look beyond themselves. It's individuals that say, Mabungu can't do this to me, you know? Mm. But also it's individuals that when we are supporting and sometimes we love, they, they think our world revolves around them. Mm. The minute they know <laughs> the world does not revolve in, the, in them as one leader, mm. they, your world revolves in a collective Ah, then they get so petty. It's individuals. But what I love mm. about the African National Congress is after every conference, there are these teething problems, but they just find a way to, to work out. You know, one of the things that I love, I mean, by the time I was being taken out as a mayor, I was already a chairperson of the South African Communist Party in Mark. Did, did in you see Atheist it coming Man. or it was just a shock? I just want to ah, get that ah, moment. You want to define the moment. I just want to understand like when... Did you expect it or it was like... No, I think I think it was both. These are comrades that were leading, I was leading with in the province. Um, I had good times and bad times and I'm one of those people that are vocal in the meeting. Um, so I never thought or a different view can threaten a, a government position. Mm. So, so yeah, I, I, I did not see it coming, but... Also, I was not just a pure person, I was a leader. Um, so when you you sit in a meeting and the meeting takes this type of a decision, you're like, wow, oh, so this is me. You uh, realize that some <laughs> you were speaking to, they, they, they had the information, but they were like, yo, we'll see. No, but you see, why, why I'm not a bitter person and I didn't leave the ANC or leave politics is yeah. because... Maybe I asked myself, I sat in one meeting and took a decision about other people like that before. Yes. Yeah, man. In I might have honesty. said it. <laughs> <laughs> then fast forward. Yeah. We are in Vember District Municipality. If there are any highlights at Vember District Municipality. You know, in Bembe, um, the part of the transition that I did, for me in Bembe was not more about the transition that I did was about where I started when I joined Bembe. I was mm. head of community services um, a, as, a, as an MMC first. Um, and <coughs> for me, that is when Bembe, we were building up Bembe. And when I was head of community services, you know, we, one of the things that we did well was to buy trucks for the fire stations. What we did well as well was to take people to training, to have a fully fledged fire department, which was the mm. commandate of the community services. Yes. And uh, you know, one of the things that I think these days we no longer do, community services is responsible for protocol of the government as part of their safety and security responsibility. <clears throat> By then, we used to run sessions on protocol. Mm. So when you have got your officials, your officials, if they are going to work in the mayor's office, work in any office, political, they will mix with politicians. They should be trained on protocol. So me and you now, we are sitting. This is the MEC. You can't have <coughs> a person crossing as an official coming to whisper. Hmm. These were things that would train officials, which oh. now we are no longer doing. That's why you just see everybody is in a hurry to go somewhere to talk to their principal. And you ask You couldn't yourself, do that. Ne? But remember, we were not doing that even as government. So we hmm. trained, we had that responsibility. And remember, by then I was also deputy chair of SALGA. Comrade Devet was the chair Comrade Rosina, myself, with the deputy chairpersons by then mm. uh, in Salga. So we'll also do those programs for municipalities in a whole. Mm. So fast forward now, when I was requested to, to deal with the transition, I call it transition because really I did not stay for long. Uh, but the strength was that I was an MMC uh, who was involved, you know, the executive mayor by then 
would be very interactive. She will, she will not hold programs to her chest. When she had programs, when she had visitors, when she was going out to projects, she will say all MMCs should know what is happening in another section. So the transition for me to be the executive mayor there was, was, was quite okay. But I want to talk to the issues of 2019 when we then started to prepare for elections. Mm. We had communities that were full-time on strikes. We had uh, people that would want to use water as a threat to say you would not go and vote. We had uh, those that were saying, we are just looking, we will not say anything because you are not near to, next to us. So the program that I had was just on community engagements. I don't know. You know, after those elections, we checked and say, how did we survive this? It was hectic. Just if you chaotic. think now, mm. yeah, it was. we can use that word chaotic because mm. the furthest that I could use when I wake up from my house is two hours to drive to a place of meeting. And if you have to get to a community at 7 o'clock, it means by 5 o'clock you have left. So it means before that you should have woken up and prepared. But I look at the people and how the people understand the African National Congress. Because when you get there and explain why the delay, what are the plans, people mm. will understand and understand their government. And it's not about you. It's about them giving respect to the African National Congress. Wow. And for me, that is why we'll work and, and not feel that we are tired. We'll collapse, like now we'll collapse on the 30th. Because if the minute, I, the, a day that I sit and not go out, I've robbed people to, to go back to re-understanding what the ANC is to them. Mm. So, so 2019... We, we worked. I think you remember I started in December 2018 and until May 2019, we had our IDPs. We, we, we really worked. I worked with a very good team and by then now it was an issue to improve uh, your audit opinion at a local government and we got our audit opinion to improve. We, we just had all these good stories that was created by the team around me as their leader. Mm. Um, I was sharing a story the other day that every day, Nuri, <laughs> local government, even if you are to say to a community, come at eight, at eight they will be there. So don't think there's awkward time. Mm -mm. If you say to them, come at six, I'm busy the whole day, at six in the evening they are yeah, waiting. They, they are waiting. Hey. So there's never awkward time in local government. Mm. Unlike now, me and you, seven o'clock is so awkward. The MEC has to rest. You have to be doing other things, you know? Mm. So in local government, there's no awkward time. And we worked. One of the strengths was that we had a partnership with uh, one of the schools there. Those learners came. So I asked the team, can you get me a solution on just fixing the pipes that have got water, but the water is not coming out. We fix that first. Then we get to say, can we get contractors to complete unfinished projects? That water will come out. Mm. Then we can look at the long term. But these ones that we can undo now, let's do it. Then Barry, there's a school that uh, the, the, the learners have just uh, qualified to be plumbers. They came, I think there were 60. Mm. They came, um, first thing you need to do the ceremonial pictures, allow them to internalize that they are with the mayor. Yeah. So I spent time with them, they internalized that they are with the executive mayor. After that, I said to them, explain how you are going to solve my problems. But executive mayor, we need to be in the field. I took the learners to the field. We then divided them. 60 of them. 60 of them, we divided them into teams. Mm to go around the Bembe district. When they get there, the things was about valves, the things, things that you could have fixed if we had staff. Mm. But because we didn't have so much staff 
for water. Our staff was very aged by then. It was people going to pension and all that. And with no time, the water was coming out in places like Makwarera, Toyando, where we had problems of water flow. And, and so I want to come to the issue of partnerships, that when you, you see that somewhere I'm going to get stuck, mm. you introduce programs that will come handy and helpful. Like now with us, in education, mm. we talk about our learners that can read and write, but we have got NECT that purely runs programs on assisting parents on understanding how to help our learners to read and write, but also run reading programs in schools. And this becomes a valve that I always say is have so many valves that you can sometimes just open and release air yeah. so that then inside here it can then become normal again. Mm. And that's what we did in 2019. And uh, we, 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 we then went into elections, you remember, for two months there were no more strikes. People were no longer... And we'll engage. I had a very good team. You know, by that time, Comrade Tina was a speaker now in Collins Chabani. She was heading technical. There was a time that I will not even go to a meeting. By the time I woke up or get to finish another meeting calling her, when are we engaging this community? Are we are done? Done. Done. Because from there, this team were created to say, you service Makado, you service uh, these other areas. If there's a community that does not understand anything, the counselors will take a team there. Mm -hmm. So I did not have to do double. And, you know, my relationship with the ward councillors, it was just to wake up and ask the ward councillor, where are you when the people are organizing a match? The same way we're doing now. Councillor, where are you when the school will be saying this to me? Because mm. you are the first person there, even if you don't belong to provincial government. You know, I wanted us to touch on the Department of Transport when you are a speaker of legislature. I think we'll deal with those when you come back again. <laughs> yes, I want yes. us to deal now to with where you are now as the MEC of the Department of Education. And maybe we can start where, if you can provide an overview of the current policies and protocols, especially within uh, the actual school to prevent and address uh, sexual harassment among puppies. Because I think it's, a, it's, a, it's one, it's like we are turning a blind eye. We know it's happening and it's happening every day. I think the Department of Education we should just all agree is one big department that deals with building a life. Mm. And I've come to embrace that, and that is why you see us double eff putting a double effort on everything that we do. We, we mold a child, and now we are even starting at three years. But we are not turning a blind eye. We feel, as a department, I think, we, we have done so much to try and include um, other people. You know, the SGB issue. The school governing body, it's a mandatory policy that is there because we are trying to bridge a gap between the life of a child when they are at home and us, mm -hmm. where they spend so much time. And we, we are trying to understand this child and mold it, but give it back to the parent through the SGB to say, can you assist us not to change what we are giving you back? Mm. So, so, so there is a, a new committee, like I was saying, of the QLTCs. In each school, we expect to have a teacher that will be responsible for learner affairs. We, we are expected to profile the learners to know if they are having difficulties. You know, my, my, my grandson is telling me that in their class, there is just one child that can just stay in space without writing or reading. Mm. And, and when the teacher says, give instruction, that child will just freeze. So I ask him, do you, in your own understanding, think it is normal? 
Then he says, no, but okay, it's fine. I'll make follow up. But at the same time, it shows you that profiling a learner is very, very critical. Because when we don't know the social circumstances and the problem, mm. that child might be from a funeral. They might have had a very serious loss. Mm. That child might be in drugs. That child might be have left home after being reprimanded so seriously that they have lost their thoughts and the space where they are. So many social circumstances. So the QLTs are supposed to work with us and help us in mm -hmm. also making parents to understand why the children should be in a conducive environment at home mm. before they come to the schools. Because when they are at home, it belongs to another department. It is not me. I receive them from the gate. So we are strengthening our partnership with the police in terms of the safer school program. Mm. That program, it is existing. It's just that because people will follow what MECs go and do. But on the safer school, we I limit visibility because the police needs to go and do their work. Mm. When I was still with the other department, which is another day, we'll tell you how we used to do take the canines to school. But now when they go to work, I, I, it's another department, but we, we want them to go and check drugs and check all these other things because now we have got objects that learners can bring at school and can stab another child. But we're saying through the SGB and the QLTCs, these children are leaving a home. We, we, we want parents to, to, to assist us in looking at that. And, and I think we as a department, we then came back and said, out of all the social problems that we face, we can't not do what is our core mandate. And our core mandate is curriculum. Mm. And, and we have worked so hard. You know, my argument is that I cannot have my teachers and my learners delivering a curriculum where the place is not neat. That is why we went hard on infrastructure. Mm. We can deliver curriculum when they don't have proper sanitation. And today we are left with less than 50 pit latrines in the province. Wow, and it used to be a lot. It used to it, be around 700, isn't yes, it? Yes, it used to be there. Mm. So so, so we, 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 we have worked so hard to say conducive environment for us to deliver curriculum. In fact, I want to give you a blank check for you to get in there because over the past 30 years, we have seen water in our villages. We have seen feeding scheme pro programs. A child, you know, can, can leave home on an empty stomach, still eat and still carry a little bit of food home. We have seen the issue of scholar transport. I mean, in my era, we used to walk close to 10 kilometers to school. But now there's a bus waiting for you. We have uh, other schools. We have school sanitary towers infrastructure facility, you have worked on them, um, the environmental systems, which I think they are a, a, a game changer in villages. Uh, personal acts of kindness, assisting children with special needs, those with autism, and identifying that these kids need needs. I, I want you to now try to, you know, tell us what, what happened, because I want you to now wear a head of a public service, but also a head of an ANC, a, a, a person who has been working because it's like we have forgotten or this story is not told the way it should be told. Um, remember, we have got two types of people. We have got those that knows, but we're not aware. They have not forgotten. It's just that they, they were not aware that this is what is, is supposed to be part of them. The era of those that have suffered in apartheid, they have got so much anger it's not easy for them to loosen up and accept that the 30 years has got so much success. Uh, people are still narrowing into looking at themselves. But we have got those that don't know because they were born now. And people are using the ideas of young people to also measure the 30 years, which cannot be correct. Mm -hmm. Because a young person that is 18 now and 19 and 20, they are still far from the 30 years because from 18 to 21, they've just been exposed to only high, higher education environment. 
kima soft kima soft yes they do you know now a, a a child the president has summed it up better by etinzwalo mm. and they just need to recognize that etinzwalo is no longer just only a graduate etinzwalo is my happy fit at an ecd because these children i'm overprotective mm. at an ecd level i'm saying to my my children my happy fit that you eat here and you you sit here and you no longer just come to sleep here you get taught so at three years they need to start to do activities you know one time um when i visited the ecd track i just loved it i said to them one day i should go to a farm with the ecd track and i see because where my learners are at a farm they don't have ecd as our creches mm -hmm. we have got tracks that goes there so a farm child we are saying your future is not to toll the soil of this farmer but your future belongs to yourself through it's education yeah. is limitless so 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 now you narrow into primary school i would not even only emphasize the eating um, as a basic need that we have provided and a right of a child to be fed mm. but i will also say you go to a primary school and you have got coding and robotics this child just touches a computer and a tablet and they can play around with it at the age of three. at the age of three and five and seven they touch this gadget that there is a, a person who's 50 that has not touched that gadget and doesn't so, even does doesn't not even need, look yeah. at it you know uh, and and you then go into a secondary school mm. that has got all these learners that we are saying to them the choices of a career is beyond your own understanding get into the internet and surf you know, one of the things that happened was when we had a workshop for a coding and robotics for solving mathematics. And I was like, hey, they're taking me to these things that I also will not understand. But I get there, I find that the learners themselves understand better how to use the coding as a way of solving mathematics. And wow. they are using computers they are using tablets they are using formulas to deal with difficult questions and mm. and these things are available in public schools in public schools and not in town in villages and townships mm -hmm. where a parent cannot afford you, you know some of us touch the computer for the first time in south africa exactly for the first time literally so and now we have schools from lower and secondary in villages as giving people opportunities to go and learn. I th that's very remarkable. Not just giving them an opportunity, giving them a tablet to touch and own. You know, they own because they will gradually go with it. When they go to secondary, they will leave it for other learners. Mm. But you own. And, and we have got schools that, have, that are teaching technology. So it means that that child, that's why now you can never ever leave your phone with a child with a code. Remember, they know how to break your code. Yeah. yeah. You do a pattern, you do numbers. When you come back, they've broken the code. Mm. So you are looking at a generation that has got all this in front of them. And remember, when we, we, we the policy of the African National Congress, when it talks to accessibility and available education to everyone this is what we're talking about we're saying you don't need to pay for you to be able to be taught uh, you don't need to pay for you to have accessibility to education we we only have to say you pay if you want double what we can afford for everybody so so that is and we went on to say, how do we protect the, the, these children? We then classified our schools into quintiles. Mm. You'll remember that we've got the quintile one, quintile two, quintile three, that are no fee paying schools. Mm. We are protecting the decision to make sure that these learners get what they are supposed to get. Because if we don't have a policy as the government and the ANC yes. that protects that decision, somebody can just wake up as an MEC 
in Limpopo and says, all of you now, you are paying school fees. I don't have money. And the policy of the sanitary towel, somebody looks at it because you'll, you'll look at how many people and how many sanitary towels do you have in a shelf in, in clicks and think everybody cannot afford. It's not about that. Mm. But also we are bridging the gap between a child born today that has got a grandmother that will be tempted to use something else to teach that child hygiene during the period. So we are also bridging the gap of knowledge from a generation that was never exposed to a sanitary towel to a generation that should know that <sighs> this. So the bridging of knowledge and gaps are protected by the policies of the African National Congress. Yes. And when I wake up in the mornings just to implement the policies, then I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. And I, I just love the environment where I am because the teachers have claimed back the space to be specialist in education. We've done well for the past two years. We've done well. It's and not about learning that classroom things. There's a lot. We are, we are uh, creating uh, self-sufficient adults, people who are going to contribute in a society in future. Yes, because remember, they know when they are born, they've got a birth certificate. So from three years, they know that they've got a birth certificate, something that you only took when you were 18 because you needed to get an ID, yes, you know? Yes. So we are a. So they know, Uri, when I'm 16, I'm going to get an ID. So we, we build a society that is self-reliant, -re but also that is knowledgeable. <laughs> and the, the introduction of technology and the whole IT phenomena of the fourth industrial revolution, it's actually have to happen. You force it to happen. Mm. We need to force it to happen. And I was saying to somebody uh, who wanted to sponsor, and I think it's a call that I continue to make. Somebody was saying to me, what, what is it that you want us to sponsor in, in ECDs? That bring me the, you know, the machines. I don't know what you call those machines that when you arrive at the mall, you check your, your, your address. You can shops. show you which shop is where. Yeah. If I can get those in my ECDs. Because just look at those happy faces going to, to check anything that they want from there. Mm. You know, because these are small tablets. Yes, they can crash and do. But if you have those small uh, 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 computers there, they go search, they Google, they do everything at that age. By the time they finish primary school, you are talking to a child that has got a very high level of IQ mm. and knowledgeable and exposed. So we, we need to move to a time where we, we no longer think this child will say something that is wrong and we are afraid. We need to to wait to explore that mind. Mm. And that is where mm. we are as the Department of Education. And I think uh, our teachers, against all odds, they are working very hard to try and keep up the pace. They are working very hard to try and improve the, the results. They, they are also working very hard to make sure that what they give to the learners is what can put the learners in the, on the map. You know, one of the policies that I love that protects the decisions that we've taken is about categorizations of our schools into the quintile one, quintile two, quintile three, that are also non-fee-paying schools. And these are schools that you will find in your villages and also in your townships. Mm. And I think one of the th one additional great strides that we have done is that in this course for the past two years, for the past three years, we, we have been able to get the best results. You know, 2022, 2023, so schools that have never produced good results but going to the national stage, Eish. including our own special schools where mm. we had learners from special schools going to the national stage. So it's, it's just about to say when we protect these schools where they are, it's, it's a calling as well to the society, to the parents, to say, don't go to an expensive school, but go to the school that is nearest to you. People have got this thought that they think going to town schools changes the narrative. No, kids are exposed to a lot of things from inside the high music in a taxi to meeting people that they don't know that can introduce them to drugs and all sorts of 
behavior. So, so I'm just saying that is one of the best policies that we have had. And, and I'm happy and excited because both years in 22, when our results went up by 5.2%, Last Are we year, talking metric results? Yes, metric results. 2023, when our results went 79,5, it was from these quintiles schools. Oh. Yeah, so that is the journey that mm. the parents really should be able to work with us, but the policy of the African National Congress uh, has protected that all the children, no matter which one is your background, where you come from, uh, the, the type of parents that you have, Let's all be equal. I think there's, there's also still a lot we can explore there. But now I see time has really, really, really passed. I want you to wear the cap of the ANC now. 29 May, uh, some of us don't even know what we're going to vote for. <laughs> Tell us, why should we vote for that? Why should I sit with you? You can even look at time. this camera here. I want you to be a comrade now and, and tell us and campaign. I think... <clears throat> I'm, I'm always saying to the people, priority five of the manifesto of the ANC that speaks about defending our democracy and protecting what we have is very critical. We defend our democracy, we'll be able to reduce high cost of living because our policies are pro-poor. We defend our democracy, we'll be able to continue to promote skills in different sectors, and it will then be able to activate our economy to be able to can have anyone surviving in our economy. So on the 29th of May, it's about three ballots, and on those three ballots, at the national ballot, you vote for the African National Congress. At the second ballot, which is regional ballot, you vote for the uh, ANC. On the third ballot, which is about provincial legislatures, you also vote for the ANC. And for the, the first-time voters that may say, I don't know what I'm voting for, we still encourage you, get on our website of the ANC, join my ANC today, join other young people that are exploring policies of the ANC Youth League and policies of the ANC. Go out and make a difference. After the 29th, you will know why you stood and defended the African National Congress. <laughs> yeah, no. It's a lot. I want to appreciate you for coming here. Uh, it's the first time we have, uh, uh, let me say, even a, a public official or a representative and also a deploy. And look at how we started. We started with the MEC. And I think it takes, it shows that there's something about you. It shows that you have a foresight of what uh, the digital media is doing. That this show will also impact someone's life in 15, 20 years. And we want to appreciate that you took this, uh, you're still a fairly new platform, uh, platform uh, uh, podcast. You took it serious and say, I'm going to sit there. I know that already you even uh, messed up your other meeting <laughs> by being here. And, and I, I wish you all the best. I wish you uh, people like you can really, really be strong. I, I think you are facing so many things. Uh, uh, also, personally, also as a mother and everything, I just wish you all the best. And uh, I think the province is still going to see a lot from you, just from this interview that we did. Thank you so much for having me. And I know uh, you would have wanted us to go down the journey Let's create another time, yeah. a, another space, and we talk about those. But I take what you are saying very serious. Mm. To say, let's encourage people to write down the journey that they have walked, yeah. just even for their own families, their own children, to understand them. Why mm. is my mother always out there busy? Mm. They should then they will start. She's to, busy solving people's problems. Because they don't know where I started, they will not understand the patient. So, uh, yeah, you have said something very profound. Let's share with our families as well so that then they can be able to, to know. But I just want to say thank you so much to you. Thank you so much to my team that uh, had to pull me, carry me here. And, uh, you know, they they do so much. Uh, I, ho I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. I yeah, I enjoyed the uh, you you the 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 studio. Congratulations. Your studio is very very uh, relaxing. Thank you very much. And your team is not intimidating. Mm. They've really set up the cameras and relaxed and uh, I'm sure they've been enjoying the journey as well as as well as you were enjoying. So thank you so much for having thank me. Thank you very much. I want to appreciate my water Park production styles and states, the young people that we're working with on production and thank you for listening to Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino. Click on like, subscribe. Let's actually tackle and go far in this journey together. Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino. Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino. <laughs>